Let's look at the coalition. Uh, they want Senate hearings into the government's university caps. Yeah, Not look, a bad idea. It's pretty obvious they're going to have to come up with a bigger cap. And they said, we will come up with our own cap yesterday. But they won't tell us it's a lower cap than Labor's. So they say that the government's doing this under a bit of a cloak of secrecy. Every uni's got its own cap. But I thought what else was interesting in this interview with the opposition's education spokeswoman, Sarah Henderson, is her anecdotes, which ring true to me, because I've heard similar, about an entire tutorial being held in Mandarin, about a student having to hold up a phone with Google Translate on the phone <laughs> to understand what the tutor was saying in a university. Now, is this the university system we want? I think the government's got a point with the caps. It's all about how it's implemented, I guess, because Sydney Uni, 50% foreign students, I don't think is what Sydney Uni was established for. Here was Sarah Henderson yesterday. Australian students are sitting in lecture theatres. 75% of the students are foreign. Uh, they are they're divided in terms of their work. They can't work together. Um, even foreign students are using Google Translate. They're holding their phone up to a lecturer to understand what's going on. There was the story a few weeks ago about a young first-year commerce student at, the, at Melbourne Uni. He's just left commerce because his entire tutorial uh, was basically being spoken in Mandarin, including from the tutor. Yeah, the occasional bit of English here and there, but every other student in his class was a foreign student. They were all speaking in Mandarin and, it, and he was just in despair. Uh, he couldn't learn. And that is not good enough. But how widespread do you think those stories are? I think they're pretty widespread, talking to people in the... After that was played, I had a couple of people who've been students in universities talk to me about people who can't speak English in their classes, including journalism classes, but and I've heard that How before. does that affect them? Well, it's a joke, isn't it? I mean, if you're an Australian trying to get into a journalism course, for ex our profession, for example, mm. or I had a journalism politics double major, you need to work your butt off to get a certain mark. If you're from a low socioeconomic status, you've got less of a chance of getting there. Yeah. If you're from a public school, you've got less chance of getting there. But don't worry, if you're from China and can't speak English, just hand over you've 70 k yeah. and you're at university. That's not how we get to be a clever country. That's how we get to be a dumb country. I agree with you. I think there is an over-reliance on university. I, this is another argument we can have another time, whether journalism needs to be in universities and is more of a vocation and a trade. Look, that's an argument we can have another time. But in the end, universities are our second biggest export. It's the only thing we don't dig out of the ground. Yes, there's an over-reliance on on um, foreign students, but this is a blunt instrument. We're not just talking about University of Sydney, right? We're talking about James Cook University in Townsville. We're talking about... Well, they're lifting the University. regional numbers. They're lifting the regional well, numbers. 78%, on figures, they claim. On figures five years ago. Oh, well, if, if you ask most Australians if they think 270,000 mm. new international students a year is enough for Australia, I think that's a yes. I, I think so too, but I don't think the argument that it's a you know, dramatically affecting the housing market is where it's at. I think that's a furphy, um, especially when you look at South Australia. I mean, Pe Peter Malinowskis just two weeks ago said, oh, hang on, it's not a housing issue where we are. It's we've got 10 percent vacancy for student accommodation. There you go. So, so that's so that's a, a bit of a political lie that's convenient for both major parties. I right? think that's probably but I agree, true, but, but I still so think we've got right? to stop 500,000 net I, migration I a well, year. I do as well, but to do this in such a blunt way, where are these universities finding that money? And there's no solution being offered from the government. If you don't have... Uh, if you're losing $14 million a year at a regional university because you're not having these students, that affects research and development, that affects productivity, that affects a pipeline of jobs going into the economy. So we can't... See here and pretend like you know this blunt instrument doesn't have a huge effect. I'm starting to wonder if I'm talking to Laura Jays or Mark Scott. Look, the <laughs> government's <laughs> argument is uh, not Mark Scott. The government's uh, no, sorry to insult you. <laughs> Look, the government's I used to work for Mark Scott. The government's argument is um, that the regional unis they're lifting the numbers. Whether that yeah. actually occurs, I guess, is the big test. And yeah, uh, yeah, if the group of eight can take a haircut. They're at least held. At I mean, that level, that's a good thing. I will say Harvard, one thing. You know Jason Clare's on Sunday. I'll e test him out on it. Okay, for you. good. For example, Harvard. The, would they have a huge amount of international students? I'll go and find out. Okay. Got me on Putting the spot you on the there. spot there. But I mean, I, I, my yeah, point is. Here's Dr. Google. <laughs> I, don't think, <laughs> I don't think Australia would be alone in having a huge amount. 50%? Well, I, I don't know. 
we, that's we're... a very good question. Okay. That's an appropriate question. Should we pick question. it up another time? Yeah, I'll send you a text. You can tell the okay. viewer. Right. <laughs> okay, thanks, Andrew. <laughs> uh, we'll see you soon. Bye.